Hi, right, good afternoon. Welcome to the marketplace. Coming up, President Kufado joins over 40 world leaders at the BRICS summit in South Africa, tipped to be an opportunity for Ghana to get a lifeline from its largest creditor, China. Meanwhile, South African President Cyril Ramaphosa has been highlighting opportunities after could unlock for BRICS countries. The African continental free trade area, once fully operational, will unlock the benefits of the continental market and generate mutually beneficial opportunities for both African and BRICS countries. Also coming up, government approves the establishment of a neutral shared infrastructure company to deliver nationwide 4G and 5G services. Working with the network operators and private investors to set up a 4G network and 5G network as well on this shared infrastructure. And we revisit the story of Abam, the yogurt seller and level 200 student of the University of Ghana who wants to become a geophysicist. Uh, guess what? He's earned a scholarship from Ghana Gas. After this story, I have received a lot of feedbacks, uh, some from friends and from uh, our, our supporting uh, uh, company, that's Ghana Gas. My name is Daryl Kwao. Thanks for joining us. Details coming up. Thanks for staying with us. South African President Cyril Ramaphosa is optimistic the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement will unlock immense economic benefits to the continent and other emerging economies such as Brazil, Russia, India and China. The president who was speaking at the opening session of the summit organized economic trading bloc BRICS noted that the alliance is seeking to partner more after countries for mutual development. We are therefore determined that the BRICS partnership, which has been growing in importance and influence over the years, must be harnessed to drive an inclusive global economic recovery. Advancing the African agenda for us is a strategic priority as South Africa during its chairship of BRICS. It is for this reason that we have chosen as the theme for this year's summit, BRICS and Africa, a partnership for mutually accelerated growth, sustainability, and inclusive multilateralism. We welcome the ongoing engagement of BRICS countries with Africa in the spirit of partnership and mutual respect. The African continental free trade area, once fully operational, will unlock the benefits of the continental market and generate mutually beneficial opportunities for both African and BRICS countries. Meanwhile, President Ekufuado is amongst over 40 world leaders attending this year's BRICS summit in Johannesburg. It is believed that the summit provides an opportunity for Ghana's government to engage uh, China's President Xi Jinping as the country looks forward to securing more favorable terms of an external debt restructuring, which remains a lifeline uh, for the Ghanaian economy. Head of our diplomatic desk, Blessed Suga, joins us with more. Blessed, what's the latest? Well, the 15th BRICS Summit is underway in Johannesburg, South Africa. President Ekufado is participating in this meeting where he will be here together with uh, over 40 other heads of states and governments from across the world. Uh, BRICS, the traditional alliance of Brazil, Russia, India and China, as well as South Africa, says they are moving uh, towards uh, an expansionist approach 
to embrace more countries, especially emerging economies across the African continent. Is the reason for which the theme for this year is BRICS in Africa, uh, which is aimed at promoting inclusive multilateralism. Uh, we're right here at the Santon Convention Center, uh, where lots of heads of state are arriving to participate in the first day of engagement. Uh, just uh, last night, the likes of President Cyril Ramaphosa the Brazilian uh, President De Silva and uh, the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi uh, all attended a business forum where they were making one call, the need for Africa to partner more with the BRICS alliance. Uh, it's the reason perhaps for which we have our President Nana Adodanko Kufado participating uh, in today's uh, engagements. Uh, a raft of issues to uh, be discussed which will be on the table for all these heads of states who are attending uh, the summit simply because the world and by extension many of the African economies are finding themselves in a very unique position as we speak. Not so good for them in terms of uh, the performance of the economy, mindful of the fact that external factors such as the COVID-19 pandemic and then the latest being the Russian-Ukraine war have uh, been a major factor influencing and also so negatively impacting Africa's economic growth uh, is the reason for which many of the heads of state, including President Kufado, who are participating in these uh, dialogues, would want to make a case for Africa. Uh, key on the agenda will be about intra-Africa trade, uh, partly uh, which will also centre on the, um, you know. African continental free trade area, uh, which BRICS says it wants to be a strategic alliance um, uh, for. Uh, so we have some of the heads of states uh, also coming through here uh, to make a case for that uh, to happen. I've been, uh, you know, putting a few questions to the global BRICS president, Busi Mabuza, uh, who spoke to me at the tail end of the business forum here in Johannesburg and pointing to us uh, that the African continental free trade area should not be viewed as a competition to the BRICS alliance. He's also been touching on the application by some countries, uh, such as Nigeria, being the most populous nation on the African continent, applying to formally join BRICS. I put the thought to her as to whether or not that will be a helpful move for the West Africa sub region and as to whether or not countries such as Ghana should follow same and be a member of the BRICS alliance. Here's what she had to say. Nigeria as well. Absolutely delightful news. Uh, Nigeria is the biggest economy on the continent, so yes, they are a uh, big brother. And I believe that every nation that is looking for economic opportunity for its people, that's looking for multilateral partnerships with other nations, should really consider the BRICS block as an opportunity for them. So um, I look forward to hearing what the presidents are going to announce. Right. And for Ghana? It would be absolutely brilliant. For, for Look, yeah. Ghana is also a powerhouse on the continent. And with the initiatives that um, the country has been taking in terms of linkages, trade linkages, and attracting investment into the country, it's absolutely important. I, I'm, I hope that Ghana will at some stage consider, but of course there are always national considerations. So I wouldn't be, I would, I, I would, I wouldn't be the one to say to Ghana, please apply. But I hope that at least whatever decision Ghana takes, they'll have considered the opportunity and decided in the best national interests. Right. me, every country will have its own unique challenges. What we need to focus on are the opportunities. And I would urge our African counterparts and our brothers and sisters in business and every entrepreneur that we should move away from um, uh, chaining ourselves to ideological um, constraints that those countries have. Rather, we should come and say what we want as the African continent is development. This is our time. We are inviting, the, be it the West or the East or the South, 
to come and partner with us. But what I have experienced with the partnership that South Africa has enjoyed with the BRICS nations for the past 10 years is that the countries operate from a position not of wanting to impose their ideology, their ideas, their way of doing things on um, South Africa, but rather they are there to listen to us and partner for mutual benefit. Right. So it's important for us as a continent to be there at the table. I see. Well, uh, Buzi Mabuza, it's not the only person I've been engaging here at the Johannesburg uh, Convention Centre. I've also been interacting with um, the uh, South African minister responsible for uh, small-scale enterprises, who's been speaking to me about how small and medium-scale enterprises can take advantage uh, of this BRICS summit. I believe BRICS is an enabler of what we want to achieve in the Africa continental free trade. That's why I said the market that we have as Africa on our own if we are able to then join hands to say, this is what we're good at. One of the things that Africa is great in, which other BRICS countries do not have, is access to mineral resources. Are we leveraging on that to say, if there's this particular mineral in a particular country, the African continent, how do we provide, let's say in South Africa, a manufacturing or processing element of it? And when we do that, then we're able to say, we are coming to you, our BRICS family, offering you this product instead of the raw materials that we continue to produce. So for us, it's a complementary platform that will bring more opportunities to the African I'm businesses. asking the question because of the economies of scale. You, you take a look at the likes of China, India, very big economies. They are companies who swallow up the very small ones on the African continent. As I said, if we leverage on each other, strength we're a big economy 1.4 billion 1.3 billion China 1.3 billion uh, 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 India D don't let's not undermine ourselves what has made us not to be able to really gain momentum is because we've been working in silos with the different countries in the continent now the Africa continental free trade agreement presents that opportunity of us joining hands and say just like India does as you're saying they're bigger economies we're a bigger economy in our own but we have not been smart about how we go about it we have not invested on our entrepreneurs and the capacity to manufacture we've not invested a lot in the logistics arrangement and if we do all of that and we add this that I spoke about whether you're looking at the people uh, the movement of people, the movement of, of, of products that we must look at enhancing our logistical support. All right, uh, that update there from South Africa, where the BRICS summit is underway. Back home in Ghana, the Minister of Communication and Digitalization, Eslo Usukufu, has indicated that government has approved the establishment of a neutral shared infrastructure company to deliver nationwide 4G and 5G services. According to her, this move is to help service providers extend their services to the rural areas and help government achieve its digitalization agenda. She was speaking at the 12th edition of the African Peering and Interconnection Forum hosted by Main One. As services in Africa increases, businesses are forced to create new sources of value and effectively scaling their digital infrastructure. The African Peering and Interconnection Forum, hosted by Main One, focused on trends emerging in the industry. In an interview, Minister of Communication and Digitalization, Esla Owusu Ekufo, said government will provide the infrastructure for service providers to extend 4G networks to 80% of Ghana's population. We've just been granted approval to have a neutral shared infrastructure along these same lines. But government is working, will be working with the network operators and private investors to set up a 4G network and 5G network as well on this shared infrastructure. So we're not going to be auctioning 5G. We're giving it to this network so that all operators can use it. So it's open shared infrastructure and it will extend 4G connectivity to about 80% of the population. We currently have just about 50% 4G coverage. So it means that existing network operators can utilize this network to extend their services. New operators can also utilize this network to develop um, uh, to deliver their services in country and we're hoping that by that we speed up the adoption of high-speed broadband internet services across the country. 
country manager of May 1, Emmanuel Kwating, added that the forum is aimed at harnessing the power of the internet and driving innovation for economic development. We cannot overemphasize the critical role that peering plays um, in enhancing the reach, reliability, and efficiency of this digital lifestyle. As we come together from various uh, parts of the world for this peering forum, we are united with the common purpose to harness the power of the internet and content to drive innovation, empower communities, and of course, and economic uh, development. Internet service providers were urged to collaborate and address gaps in efforts being made to promote internet traffic locally. All right, let's get some quick reaction to this. Let's talk tech with uh, Henry Kobler, who is lead for Eyes of Africa. Good afternoon to you. So uh, what do you make of this uh, move by the government? Thank you very much, Daryl. So I think that generally um, this is one of the things we should be speaking about and urging government to relatively um, coming to putting much of the infrastructure when it comes down to the digitalization. I mean, uh, this move is one of the excellent moves we're seeing from the government, and we're hoping that they sort of um, get exciting in terms of collaborating more with the service providers. I think that generally this is one way uh, they could always contribute in terms of building the infrastructure pointers when it gets down to internet adoption and technology adoption in, in our country. All right. Uh, in other news, we are beginning to see the impact of high inflation on uh, the operation, uh, operations of e-commerce companies. Uh, Jumia, an African e-commerce company, said the value of its sales between April and June uh, dropped by, I'll just get that figure for you on the prompter in a bit, it dropped by 25% um, to $202 million, leaving it with revenue of $48.5 million, 15% uh, decline. The company also said it lost 1 million customers and fulfilled uh, 6 million fewer orders in the first six months of this year than in the same period, 2022. Uh, Chief Executive uh, Francis Dufay uh, blamed it on high inflation. And we know Jumia because of uh, the successes chalked in previous years. Uh, what do you make, first of all, about this uh, first half report from Jumia? Uh, surprising? I'm not quite surprising. I mean, generally, uh, Jimmy had always been sort of on the decline. I mean, uh, especially from the from the bit of yes, mm -hmm. and so it's sort of not surprising. But this is also not, not surprising in terms of the ecosystem, uh, the e-commerce ecosystem, because I don't think that um, much of the ecosystem is actually making some level of profits in terms of the purchases that are happening on the platform. And so it doesn't really come across for only Jumia, but I think that most e-commerce platforms that are available as well. So it's not a surprise generally, but I think that it's also not going to have a bit of improvement if we're having the same problems uh, in terms of um, inflation and all of those uh, problems, which is tackling the, the main economical landscape of our country. Well, uh, it appears that there's a depressed consumer spending following the uh high inflation and so how do e-commerce companies handle this because for instance here in Ghana it looks like high inflation is going to be with us for some time. Exactly so um, that's why I mentioned that we're not seeing um, an improvement in terms of these numbers and Jumia really being the biggest e-commerce platform in Africa um, experiencing this tells you that we are having quite a number of that had across almost e-commerce platform. I have been running an e-commerce platform. We've seen such declines from uh, on our platforms in terms of the purchases that are coming in. Um, we're having these economic challenges sort of with us. We're having depression in terms of purchases with customers. Generally, um, you're having that cut across in terms of normal sales. So when it's coming down to e-commerce platform, it's sort of sort of picking up like that. Uh, again, we're sort of seeing these taxes also now see some reflections on e-commerce and so you're generally also now going to have customers uh, spending rate on, on internet services uh, going high and so generally not necessarily buying of goods but also in terms of services uh, and subscribing to subscriptions online also sort of going high with taxes and all of those things all of it it's coming together to see some level of spending on the customer side. And again, even on the, the supplier side, we're seeing some level of challenges in terms of stocking their inventories. And so that both comes in from both the supplier side and the 
and the purchases side. Again, the cost of operation in terms of these even when we're experiencing very low quality in terms of um, very low quality in terms of the internet services mm -hmm. around. And so all of these factors generally comes in to, to have that. Again, uh, you realize that the quality of service that is being provided by these e-commerce platforms is also becoming expensive by the day. I mean, trying to get support services, trying to get logistic services, sometimes purchasing things online and um, having the logistics to be able to bring that product to you alone, cast across almost half of the product you're buying. Uh, the cost of the product you're buying and so that becomes a challenge uh definitely as well and like i mentioned taxes are also seeing their ways in subscriptions i've seen these taxes also reflecting on uh let's see netflix and music platforms and all of those things and so as a consumer if i'm looking at my entire spending on the internet i will sometimes get scared because i, I would think that i'm spending so much again the inventory itself is not even available uh, okay. for 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 purchase so, I mean, how do e-commerce businesses go about this so that they still remain profitable? Any suggestions? First of all, I think um, support services is very important. I mean, uh, initiation of support services to be able to encourage users uh, that could actually convert their visits into purchases could be. I think promotions also um, gets to be a point. And then also doing a bit of consolidation of product. And so, Generally, I've been able to buy some things online because um, there are a combination of items which actually comes in bulk. And so purchasing them at a low cost definitely makes it easy for me to buy those products. And so I think that gives customers some encouragement enough to buy. Again, uh, delivery, uh, payment on delivery is one of the options that could also be triggered in uh, because, again, a lot of people don't want to... I mean, pay before having the product and then would actually have that fear using their to uh, gain what, what they could do. All right, uh, Henry Kobler, thanks for speaking with us, lead for Eyes of Africa. I appreciate your insights. Well, a few months ago on, uh, on this channel, Joy Business told you the story of Abam, a yoga seller and a level 200 student of the University of Ghana who was aspiring to become a geophysicist but feared his hopes would be dashed because of financial challenges. But Abam's story has changed. He's earned a scholarship from Ghana Gas following a Joy Business's story. James Ishen followed up. That's the work I do to support myself. I mean, pay my fees, then uh, feed myself. I started uh, last year. By then, I, w I was working uh, with Avotic Ghana Limited at Tema. But the salary was too small. It was too small, so I decided to sell you both. My, my parents are there. My parents are there. They are there. Yeah, they are there. So but how come are they not supporting you? Oh, if they have, they would have support me. My, my, both of them are into fishery. My mom is a fishmonger and my father is a fisherman. Where are they from? From uh, me. These were the words of Abam, a 21-year-old student at the University of Ghana who used to juggle between school and men out job of selling yogurt on the street to make money for himself and his education. That one I would say is not easy. And yes, yeah, so I have to work small to support myself. That is on Saturdays and maybe Sundays. Uh, for the Sundays, not all that regular. I only work on Saturday and use Sundays and the non-working uh, and the working days to I mean, study. Abam was on the verge of dropping out of school a few weeks ago due to lack of support. The hopes of the young man of becoming a geophysicist was nearly dashed. In fact, I can't, I can't, I can't learn with empty stomach. So I have to, I mean, uh, find something. And as I am, I'm schooling too, I can't say because of the challenges, I will stop. And the fees too, it's not easy. Last year I paid um, 2,106. And this year, this year I, pay, I paid half. I paid 70% rather. Being a non-resident, I will first of all talk about the, the TNT. They don't actually 
uh, know me and we are in Accra. All, all of us are minding our business, like we struggle to feed ourselves. So that one, I don't think it has nothing to do with me and I mean my customers. Daily my average ranges from 60 to 70 CDs a day. That is how much you make from yeah, selling? Yeah, my profits. Oh, yeah. Okay. So in a week we are looking at almost 300 CDs plus? Yeah, yeah. And that's enough for you to put your school and all that? It's not enough anyway because out of that amount, I use some to, I mean, buy food, then save some for my fees and others. The goal of becoming a geophysicist has now received a massive boost. He believes this could go a long way to support of feedbacks, uh, some from friends and from uh, our, our supporting uh, uh, company, that's Ghana Gas. Yeah. So, talking about friends, let, now let me understand. Um, did your friends contribute to give you anything? Did you get money from other places at all? Yeah, my friends helped me a lot. Some helped me, some too contributed something to help me. And add. All right, that's the remarkable story of that yoga seller Abam, who is now able to pursue his dream of becoming a geophysicist. Uh, thanks to a scholarship from Ghana Gas. Before we go, let's just check out our top stories here on our website, myjoonline.com forward slash business. Bank find 5.4 million uh, pounds after energy traders used WhatsApp. It intrigues me. You want to read more about that? Myjoonline.com forward slash business. My name is Daryl Kwab. Thanks for watching. Uh, we'll be back same time tomorrow. And if you can, join us on radio for the masterclass in 30 seconds.